Well, this is unfortunate. I'm in the middle of uh, doing the final testing on this IM12 as compared to the uh, 331 Alpha. And my IG72 has, has up and died on me. It, both of the meters just dropped to zero on the units. And I've, I've hooked up my oscilloscope here. And I'm, I'm checking this. And I don't want to do this too much because I'm going to open this up and have a look here. But the voltage dropped almost nothing. So if I if I crank it up at, at full tilt, we'll see that it, it tries to get a voltage and you can see it bounces back down. So on the 10 scale, I was getting like like three volts. So essentially I'm not getting any power out of this thing. So I'm just, you know, wondering what's wrong. I see what looks like a slight uh, DC deflection on the, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just turn on one more time. A slight DC def deflection on the uh, hand tack. We're gonna have to uh, shift projects here to the IG72 and find out why this has died. Let's get started. Starting off really quickly, I see no uh, obvious signs of damage or fire or anything. I do make two immediate observations. Number one is this resistor right here, this 20 watt resistor, uh, this one cooks, right? And I mean cooks. You can see that it's, it's, it's melted my mat a couple of times. Um, this one is ice cold. Right, so that's just just an observation. Right, second observation: when you run this thing at full tilt, you get a small glow from this uh, ballast bulb over here, and there's no glow at all. Uh, the bulb looks like the filament is intact. I don't think there's any filament issue there, especially given the fact that this resistor is ice cold. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the uh, rectifier, see if we got any DC coming off of it. Seen about 492 volts DC coming out of the rectifier, so we're definitely getting DC out of there on both sides of this capacitor right here. So yeah, definitely DC coming out of this. It stands to reason that DC does make its way into the 6CL6. So we see here, the plate voltage is good. It would seem as if I have lost the 5000 ohm. 20 watt resistor as it is reading open across this I'm going to double check this but I, I think I found the culprit here uh, this this guy's finally gone the first time I did the repair video for this unit I never really worried about getting the uh, resistors the 5% and the 1% into specification I just wanted to get the device working at the time never really got back to it so I decided if I was going to replace that 5k uh uh, what was a 20 watt resistor? I was gonna at least check the other one to see what was out of spec And we can see for the 5% ones uh, The values are, are actually really bad As we can see here uh, These are the percentages out of tolerance and I think only one of them this one 330 actually made it and everything else was out This one just out but uh, pretty much garbage uh, For the 1% it did fare better uh, these two hundreds were out of specification. The other ones were, were pretty much spot on. You can't improve upon those. So what I did was, I went and gone, I'd gone to uh, uh, Newark and ordered uh, all of the resistors that I would need in one shot so I would be able to replace those resistors and do it as a single project. So as soon as they arrive, I'm gonna slap them all in and I paying special attention to this one. I decided to get uh, a much larger uh, rated resistor 5k 50 watt that has one of those aluminum mounts that uses the paste with the uh, heat sinks and the screws that will actually mount onto the case. So my parts have arrived for the repair of the IG 72 including this monster right here. This is a 5k resistor uh, 50 watt. Now, when they say that this is rated to 50 watts, what they're saying is, is that it is designed to be mounted against the chassis of the device. Uh, before I do that, though, what I would like to do is take the old one out of circuit, uh, put this in just temporarily, and make sure that I can validate that everything's working fine with the replacement of this without just having it run for hours on end, just a few minutes to check it out. So I found that depending on how you hold this and bend this will, will change the resistance. 
Um, I've tried a couple of different ways here. You get it just right, you could get it to, to 5 and it'll go up to 10. And then it'll go to full open. And somehow I've bent it right so it stops being fully open at all. But yeah, something's not right with this resistor. Uh, by comparison, of course, take the new resistor and just connect that right up here. There you go. And I'm not going to run this too long. This is just to see if it works. So I'm going to fire it up. We'll let the tubes warm up for a second. And we're going to see if we get anything on here. Yeah, the device works. It was, in fact, the resistor. Should come as no surprise. I'm going to shut it down now. That's it. In that amount of time, this resistor went from cold to not cold to touch, like, like body temperature. In, in like that 15 seconds was all it took. This thing drops, I think, uh, 10 watts constant the second the device turns on. And that's, that's a considerable amount of power for constant, uh, um, constant draw, so pretty impressive. I would like the resistor to go right here on the opposite side of the cabinet, and since it's symmetrical, I can mark the holes here and drill them, and then just flip it around, uh, thread the holes, and then put some nuts through so that they're flush on the other side. And I start by setting it up and I'm marking out two pilot holes, and I've got that now. Obviously, I want to keep checking and making sure everything's good and everything is looking real nice. The holes are now sufficiently drilled and tapped and deburred on both sides and the other side was all scraped away so that I could apply uh, some conductive grease to both sides of this before I mount it. And I like doing it so much that since I put the holes in backwards I got to do it twice. They're supposed to go here and here. So uh, yeah, because it's on the other side that is being mounted. Wish somebody here watching the movie had warned me of this. Either way, it's done. In screwing in one screw all the way, I could see that I will need uh, two of these washers to flush mount that screw. So now I'll take out that screw, put two washers in. With a final filing, the uh, edges of the screws become flush. That way there's as much metal to metal contact as possible. And the end result is a resistor mounted on the inside of the case that dissipates heat throughout the uh, entire inner portion of the chassis. Now we can see that the new resistor is wired into circuit. I use some of my nicer, uh, thicker gauge cable to do this. And I'm ready to test now and see how everything's working. So we're gonna uh, shut off the soldering iron and take a look at the oscilloscope. So it's gonna warm up and we'll see if we get a signal, which I expect to. And once it does, I wanna also take a look at some other stuff immediately after it turns on. We can see it's coming up now. And there's our sine wave. Right now I have it set at, looking at just about, I'll set it down right here at seven, seven volts. Looking at uh, my uh, um, fluke meter just out of the field of vision, but what I would like to do is just take a look at the DC there. And as I expected, uh, previously I looked at the DC was incredibly high. Uh, just checking if there was any DC at all, but I wasn't concerned because with this resistor out of circuit, uh, I expected it to climb substantially. I'm now looking and I see DC of 400 volts, which is uh, much lower, uh, safer, a, l a little low, a little too low, but uh, definitely okay now. So I'm no longer worried about that. I'm going to take a look at uh, the voltage after that uh, resistor and we see 200. Okay, very good. That takes care of the immediate problem with this unit, and I'll be able to uh, swap out the resistors. It's my understanding that all of the uh, sizes of resistors have arrived but one. Uh, if that's the case, no big deal. Uh, I'll just come in later and replace the one that couldn't be replaced at this time. Uh, the important thing is, is that the 100K resistors arrived, and those were the, the one percents that were out of spec. Those will go in as well as any available ones. I'm going to do that now while the box is open. Also, you can see right here, the light bulb is glowing. So, cool. The resistor is throwing heat uh, to the chassis. I could, I could definitely feel it, which is good. 
I want to feel heat coming off of the back of this panel here. I could see uh, just about, you can see about like 100 degrees and it'll, it'll make its way down here eventually as it, as it uh, soaks. On the other side of the resistor, we can see the actual resistor is about 118 degrees. So that's just fine for uh, the amount of power that it's dissipating. And again, the fact that I'm seeing heat over here is a very good sign because unlike the old resistor that is just hanging in the box doing nothing, uh, this time it's actually dissipating that heat into the chassis. When you consider that the old resistor was hot enough to actually melt through my table uh, when I was doing the original video, this one isn't able to get much higher than the mid 120s. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's dissipating the heat quicker than it can uh, generate it. So definitely a major improvement. You actually had to remove this whole unit from the uh, chassis to get back at this 100K. It was just too hard to clip out. I had no way to reach it. It's under here. Okay, I've replaced those 200s that were out of spec. I'm just going to go through the um, the times 10 scale right quick. The accuracy has improved, but the, the nature of this design, the way they were able to reduce components is, is such that the higher you go on the knob as you approach 10, the less accurate it becomes. Right now I'm on 1. And you can see them off only by 4 hertz. It's showing 96 for 100. When I go to 5, I'm now showing 480 of 500 off by 20. 8 is um, 770 of 800 off by 30 hertz. And then finally, we have 962, right? So it's off by 38 hertz by the time you get to a thousand hertz. So it's just the design and, and it's off by, for, for the way this thing is set off, it's off by, um, you know, 38, 38 hertz for every thousand hertz in the setup. I, I'm gonna say whatever, I'm not overly concerned, but it was off by a lot more before I fixed that. So, okay, we're gonna call that done. I've gotten these one units done too now, uh, very close to the uh, times one increments that I'm looking for, I've tested them. Uh, they look good. I'm just waiting for the other resistors to arrive by mail and I'll swap those out later, not part of this video. Before I close out this video though, I want to point out something that I actually tested I found to be quite surprising. Uh, you can see here that I have set this knob here for, uh, we can see plus 20 dB. And on this knob over here, I've set it for exactly zero decibels. And I'm going to go over to the um, FFT on the hand tack and show you what we got here on the Spectrum Analyzer, right, as a reference. And we can see that I have moved the uh, top line over to that line right there, and that's gonna be the reference uh, for the measurements that I'm going to do uh, from here on out. Now, what surprised me was, is that now I'm going to move uh, this adjustment down to just plus 10 instead of plus 20, right? So I'll move it there, and I'll just adjust to bring this back into position, right? When I adjust the other cursor, as shown here, the other cursor is marked as E, and I leave S alone, S was my original reference, we can see that the delta shown on the bottom right is exactly 10 decibels, right? And that is perfect, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the switch down again, and we're going to then move E to accommodate that. So I'm going to move the switch down again. I imagine that, that as I do this and I load it up, it's, it's going to slowly, you know, be a little bit off. But the fact that, that this was on point is, is amazing. So I'm going to dial this back to zero, right? This is how I did it. So I got this back on zero and I'm going to go over to the unit. So I'm at the unit and we can see that obviously it's moved. And I'm going to bring this down to where the new line is. I'm doing this through the camera, right? And we can see the new line sits at 20 decibels, right? So that is, that's spot on. I mean, there it is, right? We'll move to the next one. At this point, it's going to start getting difficult uh, because we're going to start attenuating and the uh, signal's going to get close to the noise floor. But we're going to, we're going to see how long we can do this, right? So I'm moving it to neg 10 now. And I'm bringing this back to zero right here, right? And we, we, I'm looking at the oscilloscope. We still have enough signal to work with. So we're going to move over to the oscilloscope now. Get the 
It's right on the money, right? Yeah, we can see that we're starting to get some some variation on the oscilloscope as, as we start to attenuate the signal uh, through those uh, uh, resistors, right? But still, it's not far off. We're seeing 28.8. And I'll, I'll give it another shot to NED20. And NED20 is, is bouncing already. It's sitting just above the noise flow. This might be the last one. We'll try this. NED30 would already be in the noise, so... There's NEG20, and we'll move over to the FFT and see what we got. And it is bouncing around, so it's really hard to... It's a little over, it's a little under. Sitting at around 38 decibel offset. So between the plus 20 and the minus 20, it's, it's off by 2 decibels. But in fact, we know that it's off by 2 decibels, like right over here in these resistors. If I really wanted to spend a whole lot of time on this, I could probably correct for that. As I worked my way down, I really don't care. I'm just, I'm just pleased that that this is as close as it is. Um, I was, I'm just quite surprised. So we're gonna call uh, the repair of this unit complete and back in service. Uh, this was an unscheduled repair. I think that the uh, replacement of this old style resistor with something that mounts on the case will be a much more effective in heat dissipation. That 50 watt resistor. Uh, is more uh, suited for the job than this piece. And signal is looking uh, very nice on the oscilloscope now. And we're gonna we're gonna say that this is done, and we're back to our regularly scheduled restoration. So thanks for watching.